I am not a member of the United Church of Christ, and I have never before been at Trinity United Church of Christ, although I now feel very welcome to return. Rather, my presence here today is representative of the wider Christian community to which the United Church of Christ with all of its congregations is related. The National Council of Churches, of which I am the General Secretary, is a community of very diverse churches or denominations, including Orthodox churches, the historic Peace Churches, Methodist and Baptist churches that are predominantly African American, recent immigrant churches, mainline Protestants, the predecessor bodies of the United Church of Christ were founding members of this council, the National Council of Churches, and since it was formed in 1957, the UCC has been a valued contributor to every dimension of the council's life. Theological dialogues aimed at promoting Christian unity, Bible translation, which has led to the production of the new revised standard version of the Bible, Sunday school curriculum development, advocacy on behalf of poverty relief or environmental protection, on and on. Not all of the member churches of the National Council agree with all of the stands taken by the United Church of Christ, let alone by all of the things said by its ministers. But you could say the same about every one of our member churches. In recent weeks, I have seen the United Church of Christ more than occasionally portrayed as some kind of radical sect. This, of course, is nonsense. It is a denomination valued by its ecumenical partners not only for its commitment to justice, which it is, but for its life of worship and its service in the name of Jesus Christ. As I said, I have not worshiped at Trinity UCC, but I know and respect a number of people who do. I have heard the former pastor of this congregation, the Reverend Jeremiah Wright, on at least three occasions that I can remember, and I have found him to be inspiring and biblically grounded. In fact, there is a passage in the Christian scriptures from the book of Romans, the letter to the Romans, which comes to mind when I think about his sermons, which I have heard. The passage reads this way. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Genuine love, in other words, will not only say yes to the neighbor, it will also say no to all that diminishes the neighbor. Reverend Wright, during his ministry here, built up this community and affirmed people in it as children of God. And at times he made others feel uncomfortable by saying no to all that would tear them down. So one reason that I am here is to affirm this denomination and this congregation and to say strongly that they are not fringe groups. They are part of the wider Christian community. There's another reason that I wanted to be present today, however, and that is that issues raised in recent weeks around Trinity UCC have a bearing on all churches and I dare say other faith communities across this country. And I think that my colleagues standing behind me this, this afternoon bear witness to that. One of those issues is surely race. The frustration heard in these sound bites of Reverend Wright that frustration is one voice and by no means an isolated one in what John Thomas calls a sacred conversation that we now need to have far more widely in our churches 
and in our society. I do think that Senator Obama is correct when he says that this country has made important strides in confronting its racist past. But surely, surely, no one thinks that racism has been eradicated. The National Council of Churches has historically been deeply involved in the struggle for civil rights, but in recent years, to be brutally honest, our efforts, like those in other churches and across this country, have lagged. In this setting, where the challenge to overcome racism has been so clearly expressed, I commit myself to make this a priority of my own leadership at the National Council of Churches and pledge to you that I will invite all of our churches to enter deeply and actively into this sacred conversation. Another issue raised in connection with this congregation, as we've just heard, is the sanctity of places in which people gather to worship God. If there are threats against one church, as there have been here, all churches are threatened. If the privacy of church members in one place is violated, as it has been here, all places of worship are violated. That's what Christians mean when we say that we are part of the one body of Christ. I hope that my presence this afternoon and that of the many colleagues who stand behind me represents this connectedness to one another. <laughs>